right now, the focus from the last couple conferences I've been to has been around kids' virtual worlds. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do you create, uh, it, it's really difficult, because we're in the middle of one right now. We're creating a virtual world that is uh, for kids, and it, it's, you know, it, we're really working hard to try to differentiate it. And it's a brand that doesn't have a brand that you would all know. So we're tapping into all of these different marketing um, arenas and, you know, working with a marketing group to do it. It's just part of it. Yeah. Go ahead. There are a couple other options. If you take a, a smaller target and target people that are in a world that your game is in, because they have existing social structures and you can spread virally along them, or you can work with the existing organizations there. For example, a lot of Second Life people get together in one kind of club or another. You can market to that. I forget which movie it was. They sent people in, in the movie character to do a talking game. Right. And just talk it through. And that, I haven't seen the numbers on that, but you get an encounter and you're hitting a, a tight social group. They got, I'm sure, a bit of a benefit that, hey, somebody from a movie just came and talked to me about the movie. That's never happened before. The next people won't get that. But it's still a novel way. And it starts you way down on the curve of people cutting off to, they're already in the world. You just come on over, check this out. And that's good right now because in, in worlds like Second Life, where you have this mingling of brands and everything, uh, you have influencers because they're early adopters. They made it through the uh, boot camp of installing this viewer and getting through. Like They have the hardware. They're there. Uh, but if, if a world like that catches on, the, the, that marketing strategy falls apart because you might as well just hire people to walk up to people on the street uh, because you're not going to get the... the that concentration of influencers, which you really need to make a, 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 a marketing campaign like that. With. Well, there are companies that hire people who walk up to people in the street That's right. and advertise. That right. guys. But they're, so uh, that one's done too. But like recently, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, they're not doing that, by the way. But <laughs> they are uh, uh, they are doing TV ads. Um, and that's and that's garnered uh, you know, quite a few users. I forget what their numbers are. There's a, there's a great article written by Paul Hemp. Uh, the Heart of Business Review, which talks about selling to avatars, uh, strange as it may seem. And that is also um, a bit of, even though it's a little bit dated now, that's the kind of thing that I would think that if you want, if you understand that the avatars may or may not be all the ego of the people that are in the world, then it should be, it should be, but not may, may not be, um, it could be the avatar's dream because don't, don't the advertisers out there try to sell idealized versions of ourselves? So in, in that prospect, there's one, one thing that I put the other day that I thought is, is an interesting prospect is, you know, because the whole idea is to get um, uh, intermingling between the real world, the web, and the virtual world. There's this company that opened up in Second Life that's, um, you could design clothing, your fashion within Second Life. Do you see that name? You could design it, and then they will make it for it. Did you see that? Yeah. No. You're, not, you're not talking about the sweatshop, one, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a specific project. No, yeah, that was a very interesting project. But, but this, this kind of thing, to me, and if you can make a game out of it, and one of the things that's really important in virtual worlds is this whole status thing, which is why in Second Life, buying clothing and getting skins and adding body parts is such a big business. But somehow, you know, if they could just, well, it's advanced prototyping, if they could straddle between the virtual world and the real world, I think they really have some. I mean, and it would open up a new market for sure. Well, since, since it was mentioned, the sweatshop thing was interesting. That was more of an art exhibition. What they did was they built a jeans factory, and they hired people at tiny, tiny wages to work in the jeans factory. And then you could come in and customize jeans, and they would print them out on, I think, Tyvek, and mail them to you. Um, and it, it wasn't, obviously, a, a marketing thing. It was marketing how terrible, you know, you, it was marketing social consciousness about where your clothes come from. But take out all the icky bits, and, and you have this other one that I didn't.
I'll just put it here. <coughs> there is a conference coming up on using virtual books for Sofa King, that I read about. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's supposed to be in New York. Um, so, and, and it would seem, you know, when I, when I was at the DDC in San Francisco, there, this one guy told me, you know, and he was, uh, he was repping uh, a company in China. He said that in, in the view of the hardcore gamers, most of the people in virtual worlds, particularly Second Life, are idealists. You know, and I don't, you know, if you're doing a social change angle, <coughs> other than the character listing I put up there, well, it, it, uh, if you find the right, you know, the right company, because everybody's trying to go green, you know, and, and, and people are tying marketing to, to social campaigns which are virtually irrelevant to their product. I mean, you guys certainly want to something. I have a quick question for Greg. Um, so, I'm just wondering, is, it, is your stuff, given that it is for kids, is it, are you doing moderation? And the second part is, are you doing things to kind of encourage good behavior? Yeah, um, well, we will need to do uh, stuff to for moderation. Uh, uh, you know, build some tools in there for us to be able to take down comments, allow people to flag content, um, that sort of thing. You know, we are aiming it at uh, at kids over over 13, um, so you know, to get around like a you know, so we, I mean, we we would love to be able to like attract a younger audience, but given that like you can draw in the games and uh, and type in anything you want, that sort of takes that element out. Um, of, uh, you can't just have like uh, text fields where you kind of drop down uh, conversations. Um, so we'll have to have stuff like that. Um, and then I think ideally we, you know, that, that's a good idea to build some sort of system in to encourage the good behavior. We haven't uh, actually, you know, fully fleshed that out yet. But we have like started to think about sort of the moderation part of it, um, and that's going to be a, a huge challenge because we've already, you know, right now we have a relatively small audience, and already the games are, some of them are a little salty. <laughs> I think that's, you know, no one has one. Oh, so one has one. Um, speaking of, uh, earlier on you talked about how some marketing employees are basically trying to bridge the gap between who you are in real life and then your avatar. Um, so the part being, in uh, World of Warcraft, arguably the market share king, uh, go into that with William Shatner and a bunch of other different actors to have uh, essentially advertisements that I think they flooded over YouTube and a few other places. Um, showing who they are now and kind of what their preferred avatar would be. And then also with uh, talking about uh, how best to moderate, obviously if you're shooting for the younger groups, um, what do you feel about the difference between essentially Nintendo's idea of having really canned responses and easily, you know, moderates itself sort of input, and then having um, you know, word checks, you know, things like that. You know, things that are arguably imperfect because no one's ever really come out with a perfect way to block every word, you know, every way to say. Well, I mean, for I mean, in terms of uh, what we're doing, it's a uh, you know with the word check would be the easy part for us. Um, you know that that sort of filtering. Um, the hard part is you can draw whatever you want with the blocks and that sort of thing, and uh, and so the really creative kids are going to be you know put objectionable content there, and that'll be a lot harder for us to to figure out. So that that will rely on like some you know community elements for figuring out how to do that. Um, because you know it, there's nothing that in it that's like a that's sort of can we can you know can that way. Right, well, I, I'd like to personally thank uh, Ray and, and IGA for giving us uh, the opportunity to present this for you. And there's a lot of stuff in your the packet. You know, some of the spec sheets that we're covering, some of the platforms are in there. You can certainly download um, um, John's you know, white paper, which I think, because marketing and technology, I mean, they have, they have to see them together. In other words, you're going to make some money. So um, anyway, I'd like, to, I'd like to thank all my, my panelists. Um, Greg and John and Andy for, for uh, putting in the time, and I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Thank you.